Welcome back, guys, to today's episode on the Sex and Bacon podcast. I have a lovely guest with me, which I'm really excited to have this conversation because I think so many of us struggle in this um, this world, this new world of online dating. And I have Renee Suzanne with me. Renee, if you could give a quick little introduction about yourself, um, the space that you're in and what it is that you help, I guess, mostly women. I'm not sure if you do coaching with men at all, um, but what it is that you help them navigate and help them do. Yeah, absolutely. So I do help women. And the reason that I really am passionate about helping women is because I feel like women are not socialized to go after their desires the way men are. And now that I am married, my husband and I have these very interesting conversations about uh, our dating experience and what we encountered out there in the world. And I tell him, you know, when I was dating and women like me and my clients and my friends would say things like, oh, maybe it's not meant to be for me. Maybe that time in my life has passed or it's just not in the cards or, oh, maybe it'll happen when it's meant to be or it should just happen. Men don't say those things. Men Mm -hmm. want something and they just go freaking figure out how to get it. And they they don't let things stop them and they don't take the the passive, oh, if it's meant to be, it will happen kind of approach. Do some men? Yeah, probably, but it's not their default setting. And what I like to do is just help women go for the life that they want to create and say yes to their desires instead of just hoping that they happen. And in the online dating space and in the dating space in general, I think that it's important to know what you want and do what you can to make it happen for yourself rather than just hope it will happen or hope that whatever guy turns up will just deliver what you want without proactively communicating about it and setting yourself up to attract that kind of experience. Right. Yeah. And it's so true. So do you find though, because I mean, typically, I mean, and I have women who are like friends of mine that are very old school and it's just like, no, like the man is the one who's supposed to chase me and I'm not going to put in any of the work. And I feel it's like that gender role that we kind of grew up with believing that, you know, they will come and get us. But then there is a lot of women who are very forward and a little bit more direct Do you find that it's changed? Like, is it scaring men off when a woman is pursuing them? Um, Like, oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked because I'm not talking about pursuing men. I'm old school and very feminine, also. And I, I not. Can you pursue a man? Sure, of course. I just find that it's ineffective if you want that sort of old school dynamic in your relationship. If you want, now I work with women who either want marriage or want something that closely resembles marriage. They want a long-term committed monogamous relationship with a man. And um, like I said, even if it doesn't, not even if they don't get the ring and the paper, they want Mm -hmm. something, you know, like marriage. And a lot of the women and myself included that I worked with, do want the more traditional they want they want the wedding they want him to pay for dates they want him to call them so i'm not talking about pursuing men i'm talking about positioning yourself in online dating in the platforms on the apps as a okay. woman who inspires a man to pursue her and knows the kind of relationship she wants to create so that she attracts that kind of man and even if you don't want to pursue men, which if if you pursue a more traditional man, it's it's probably not going to work that well anyway. But um, but you want to position yourself so that he has to know you exist in order to pursue you. Right. So what does that look like? What is it that you're coaching them and helping them? I guess, put forth in, say, their profiles or things like that so that the message is very clear that they are looking for those things and they're not looking for something casual. Because I feel like in the online space, a lot of us have a really hard time actually admitting, especially as a woman, that we want a relationship because we think we're going to scare away people. Exactly. You want to scare away 
all of the guys who want casual. It's so funny. So the first thing I do with everyone is I help them to get crystal clear about the relationship that they really want and to really know what that is. And then to unapologetically own that in the way that they present themselves on the dating apps and on the dating sites and on first dates, because you want to scare away the guy who's looking for hookups. You don't have to put no hookups on my profile. If you write a profile that clearly communicates the kind of relationship you're looking for, the guy who wants a hookup isn't touching you. He's on mm -hmm. to the the kind of person who has either not indicated that they are looking for something serious or indicates that they are looking for hookups, you know, because there are people who are looking for hookups, which is fine. You just don't want to leave any doubt in his mind that you are looking for that kind of relationship. And you do want to scare those kinds of guys away. And the guy who really wants a relationship, a committed monogamous relationship, who wants marriage, who wants to have all of that, he's going to be really glad that you're not just looking for a hookup. He's going to be like, finally, somebody who wants the thing I want. Yeah, I guess if you're, the message you're putting out there is a little bit clearer and you're actually honest with yourself about what you're looking for, then it does help navigate that. I find... I find for myself, even in the past, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if I put that, then it's like you, f you really do feel like, oh, well, what if that lowers, you know, what's available to me, but you're right, it should be lowering what's available, because finding all of these guys that are talking to 20 different girls going out on, you know, five or six different dates a week, maybe, maybe in their minds, they think that they're going to find the right one. But by doing that, I mean, I don't really know that you're setting yourself up for, for success for long term looking for the same thing, right? Right. We're going for quality. Mm -hmm. You don't need a hundred guys in your inbox. You need maybe just a couple who are serious about finding someone to share their life with. Right. So a lot of the mistake, and I used to do this too, when I talk about mistakes, um, actually, I'm going to be in, uh, on my email list, I'm going to be writing a series of posts about my 10 worst dating experiences. And it's, it's going to be amazing. But one of them, so when I talk about mistakes, I'm talking about mostly a lot of the things that I did is I made them all. And I was single for a very long time. So one of the ones that I made for a, a long time was writing a profile that tried to appeal to everyone in order to draw in the most people. And then I could like kind of pick the best ones, but mm -hmm. it, it backfired because I just get all these people who were looking for all sorts of things. I'd show up on first dates because I hadn't vetted them properly and they'd be drunk or try to kiss me or just do these outlandish things because I had just written this profile that indicated like, Hey, I'm a fun person and let's, hang out in the city and go to all the places and and that just did not attract the kind of man that I really wanted mm -hmm. but like to your point I was afraid I would scare someone like scare scare them all off and there'd be no one left yeah yeah for sure so I mean as far as conversation goes because this is where when I look at relationships and I look at the lots of different types of relationships that people are in some of them are long term and after a few months or a year or two they realize there's a lot of things that they're maybe not as compatible in but it was conversations that they didn't have right off the bat because there's a lot of topics that I think people are scared to talk about but they're important topics and they matter so what are some things Though as far as conversations go, say in the first, you know, couple of weeks of dating or the first two or three dates that you would tell people to avoid talking about or ones that you would say get these conversations out of the way in the beginning instead of waiting to find out later. Like what would be the top three things you think are very valuable in having a conversation about right away? Yeah, yeah, that's I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. So the first thing that I think is very important, like first date conversation important, is the form of relationship you're looking for. You need to find out and you deserve to know what kind of relationship is this 
person looking for? Because if marriage is important to you or a long-term committed monogamous relationship, you need to find out, are they in or are they out? There is no point Mm -hmm. falling in love with someone and starting to care about them and, you know, building a, a connection with somebody who is absolutely not available for the kind of relationship you want. And what happens so many times is women will think, oh, he'll come around once he's in love with me. Once we've, you know, been together and and we've been together a few months and I've made him, a, you know, enough cups of coffee, coffee or and some cookies or something and mm-hmm. he's going to meet my dog and my mom and oh he'll come around no he won't men have brains in their heads and ideas about mm-hmm. the lives they want you need to find out what they're looking for on that first date if you're looking for something that's a non-negotiable and i hope you are looking for something that's a non-negotiable because this is your life and mm-hmm. and uh, that's that happens too like a lot of times women will get on a first or second or third date or they'll be in a few weeks and they're starting to fall for this guy and he drops the I don't want marriage I don't want kids I don't want whatever and she thinks oh the person is more important than the form of relationship or maybe I don't want kids anyway and they start watering down what they really want because they're starting to have feelings for the man and then they've given up their dreams for this guy that they really don't even know that well and then, yeah, three years later, they're pissed and they they realize that they can't have children anymore or they spent three years with somebody who is going to marry the next person or have children with the next person because they watered down their dreams and abandoned themselves for this other person. And that's not necessary. So the form of relationship that you want, your relationship goals, the things that matter to you. And if you're dating, probably those are important things to you. And another thing that I recommend, I call them the five must-haves, character-based must-haves. So if you know, first of all, form of relationship, and then the five character-based must-haves of your mate. So this isn't like, oh, he has to be six feet tall and uh, an attorney who went to Harvard or something. This is, is he kind? Is he loving? Is he honest? Is he intelligent? Does he lead the kind of life that I lead? Um, You know, if you want to go to Grateful Dead concerts every night, is he in? Those kind of things, the things that really matter to you versus the window dressing. And you want to cover all of those very early, I would say within the first couple of dates, just so that you know, is this person a candidate for the kind of connection I want before you start having feelings for him, before you start making out with them. And that's when things slip, right? When you, when you start building that emotional connection and you think, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's okay if we never get married and we live in a tree house in Antarctica. No, like then you're shaking yourself three years later, like, oh, I'm not sure that was a good idea. No, for sure. I love the way that you described it as well as watering down your dreams. I've never heard it explained that way, but it is so true. It's like we can sit there and make a list of all the things that are important to us, the things that we value in a partner and the things that we really need to feel, you know, fulfilled, which we learn those things through going through failed relationships. We tend to learn you know, okay, this didn't work for me. And I realize I really need this. And then it's we we create this list of things that matter. But then you're right, the minute you meet somebody, especially for people who have been single for a while, it's you start to get lonely. And then you meet someone and you start to be like, okay, I guess I could sacrifice this because, you know, maybe this will work. And then you do you water down that list of what it was that you held so important to you and so close to you to find in a partner because it's almost like we've convinced ourselves something is better than nothing. Yeah. But that something ends up usually becoming toxic and hurting us more in the long run than if we would have just stayed true to the course of what it is that we know that we're looking for with positioning ourselves, like you said, in a place to attract the right person to come into our lives, to step in with ease and to fill all of those. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I talk about that a lot because 
women worry that they will have to lower their standards to find someone, but you want to raise your standards in the areas that matter, in the areas that actually have something to do with having the kind of relationship you want. Yes. Yeah, it's so true. Um, a question then. So how do you feel about discussing not necessarily sexual needs, but sexual, or maybe it is more sexual needs, not expectations, but those kind of conversations right out the gate to ensure that you are on the same page with your partner when it comes to sex drive, when it comes to intimacy and all of those things. Because I feel like so many people are in these relationships with mismatched ideas or desires in an intimate way that that causes a lot of friction in itself in a relationship. Yeah, I I feel like relationships are a, a dance of intimacy and desires and needs and and physical intimacy is part of that, you know, um, especially because if you're going to be monogamous, you're essentially agreeing. Now, if you said that, oh, you want to go and like, like my example before, go to Grateful Dead concerts every night. Mm -hmm. If your partner doesn't want to go to Grateful Dead co concerts every night, maybe you could go with someone else. Sex, probably not, right? So you do, you do need to have conversations about those things and talk about that kind of importance to you because I guess we're assuming that you are not going to you're going to have a relationship where this is your one and only. And if this is going to be your only partner, then yes, you do need to have some, some conversations about what, what those needs are. And also in a long-term relationship, life happens, changes happen. So even if at the outset you have a conversation about this is what that's going to look like, and let's say, for instance, you decide that you want a lifelong partnership and you want it to include children and then the babies start coming or or things start happening or you get a dog that wakes you up every night or somebody takes a new job and they're traveling on business. It's all part of a conversation that, that will be ongoing because a relationship is something that you're going to be creating together. And all of these things are going to be part of that physical intimacy, your schedules, what you'll be doing. So I, I would recommend that you absolutely talk about those things and on, on both sides and, but you can't predict the future either. True. You know? Yeah. Like I think communication is huge. Um, and I think being, true to ourselves and authentic and what it is that we are looking for. And, you know, those are big conversations. I feel like men and women just struggle to actually find the words to be able to say those things and speak those things to another person without, you know, feeling uncomfortable, feeling awkward, feeling they're, they're going to say something wrong. Um, and that is probably one of the trickiest things is to navigate those conversations early on with somebody and to, but I mean, it, it essentially sets the foundation of what your relationship is going to look like having that. But I mean, communication is huge and yet seems to be one of the scariest things and the biggest things missing in most relationships. Yes, I, I agree. I, I feel like the, in my journey of being single and, and what I help my clients with, the first thing I help them to do is to have their I think it starts with us. So when you are opening up and communicating with someone, it involves first being first knowing what it is that you want to communicate. What's important to you? How are you going to have your own back and have the courage to open up and and share your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your needs with this other human and make yourself vulnerable in that way. That requires communication skills. It requires openness. It requires trust in yourself and in the other human that you are communicating with. 
and, you know, having your own back in that way and assuming that if this person laughs at me or thinks I'm a weirdo or whatever, I will have my own back. I will have my own back. I will take something from the experience and I will move move forward in such a way as to always take care of myself. And also you pick partners who are respectful of me. You know, maybe maybe you start with communicating what kind of food you like. You don't you don't have to go full on on the first date and say these are what my needs and expectations are in intimacy. Maybe you can start by saying, I'm allergic to dairy. Can we go to this other place? And is, is this other person respectful of your needs? Do, are they open and caring and, and wanting to hear about what's important to you? And hopefully the answer is yes. And if it isn't, I hope you don't stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's so true, right? Um, do you find with, I guess, compare? So, if a person is very clear and they do position themselves in a in a place in the online space uh, where they are attracting and you know limiting the type of men that they're bringing they're bringing in or having conversations with, do you still find though it to be? I guess not a lot of work, but a lot of work in the sense where people seem to, I mean, because you are talking to so many people at this at the same time, let's say anywhere from like three to say five people. Do you find that it is harder though, because everything is so readily available as far as pictures and conversations and stuff compared to people meeting in person and right away kind of knowing if they click or vibe with somebody in a different way compared to you can have great conversations on a phone or on a screen, but then in person, sometimes you're kind of like, okay, this isn't, you know, like it, it doesn't always line up. Like, what is it that you, you notice the biggest difference with those two things? Yeah. Yeah. I, there's two ways I want to answer this. First is I think that with online dating and apps, people tend to spend way too long on those platforms rather than getting out and meeting in person. So you've had, Maybe you've been messaging them and texting them for a couple of weeks before you finally get out on that date. I don't recommend you do that at all. I recommend a couple of exchanges on the, the platform, the app, the, the website, exchange phone numbers for a phone conversation, and then don't be going on and on texting. Actually get on a video or on an on, on an import person date and see if you vibe with them and ask that first date question. Are you available for what kind of relationship? What are you looking for? End of story. And, and be open if there's some chemistry to that growing, especially I believe um, in my experience and that of my clients, if there is some chemistry, it can grow um, on the woman's part. I think men tend to know right away. And women, if it's a no, if it's an absolute no, I would rather kiss an iguana than ever see this man again, then it doesn't grow. But if there's a little bit of chemistry, it often can grow if you give it a chance to. So um, so there's that. But I think a lot of people spend too long texting or messaging on the app and then there's this big buildup and then there's no chemistry and they're like uh but that doesn't happen if you if you cut that phase short there's that's not really a great way to get to know each other anyway so i think that's a waste of time and that is why people tend to prefer meeting in person because they can see if they vibe right away so i recommend when you're using online dating and apps and those kinds of platforms cut that part short make it a safe first date, but yes, go out and meet the person. And then it's closely approximates meeting someone in person because yes, that has been cut short. The second thing I'll say is it is so much more work to meet someone in person because everybody is online. You're going to meet way more people online. You already know, at least in theory, that they're looking for you know, they're looking to date, they're single, they're available, they want to date you, you've seen some of their stats, a lot more information is readily available than say, you go to a bar on a random Friday night. And you know what used to happen to me, 
and a lot of other single people is you go to a bar on a random Friday night and the weirdo that you don't want to talk to won't leave you alone and you don't get to meet the other cute guys that you might have wanted to talk to because you were there. So I think people tend to forget that now because there's a whole new set of difficulties with online dating and apps. And we forget those of us who are a little older, like back in the day, it wasn't so easy to meet people in person either. So there, there is that. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And I mean, when you're meeting somebody in a club or out and there's, it is a drinking situation. I mean, typically you're more meeting people who are looking for an end of the night, you know, casual situation and hookup. And not to say that some relationships have not um, progressed from situations like that, but it's, it's a little bit more on the unlikely side that something is going to come of it. If that's how you've initially started out. Um, so how long did you personally use online dating before you found success in it? Was it a long journey for you with lots of, you know, fails along the way? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I used them intermittently when, so I, I was single for a very, very long time. I was single all in from, I got divorced in 1990 and then he passed away in 96 and I remarried in 2017. So I was married for a, 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 a single for a very, very long time. And it was back in the day before online dating and apps were even a thing. And it was pretty intermittent because for the first leg of it, I was a young single mom. That was pretty tough. And then online dating just sort of starting to gather steam. So I had a very long harrowing journey. I learned almost everything the hard way. If there was a PhD in dating, I would have one because I made every mistake, most of them more than once. And um, I went on over 300 dates and over a hundred first dates. So I was really in it and I have, I have tons of experience. I do not think that is necessary to be successful Mm -hmm. Now, with the experience I have, I could take someone through that so much faster than, I mean, I know all the shortcuts now, but you, you really, it does not have to be that, that bad. <laughs> yeah. Was that very, like, that would have been very, I would imagine time consuming. Yes. And discouraging. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It sure was. Yeah. Right. I mean, Especially as a single parent, I know for myself, I mean, when I'm home and I have my little guy and then you think about the fact that I, could, I have to invest money into babysitters or, you know, time away from my child to go out there and meet men and to see if, you know, you get past the first date or the first introduction, you know, and that in itself sometimes can seem like a very daunting task. And I guess if a person really only has, let's say, one day a week or a few hours kind of here and there that they can actually dedicate to that, like, what is it that you recommend them to help them speed up the process to make it so it, it isn't so daunting so people aren't sitting around, you know, wasting months and months or years just trying to get through, you know, I guess what's available to them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm, I mentioned being clear about your relationship goals and what it is exactly you are looking for, writing a profile that reflects those things and learning to vet the men who come through for the kind of relationship you want, handling communications efficiently, and then getting on a phone call or a video chat and a first date, always in a place that is convenient for you. I don't like my ladies driving all over Kingdom Come to meet guys at Starbucks. They can be chivalrous and come to a location that is convenient for you. And is there, you know, and then and then just communicating openly, finding out what they are looking for. And when those first, and you don't need to be talking to everybody, you, there is a bit of a learning curve to it. But when you have learned how to vet people, then those first dates, those second dates, those third dates are more quality connections. They're not just running through the numbers, just, you know, like a, like a mill of mm -hmm. 
never ending groundhog day type first dates that won't be happening when you have this process dialed. And about the time you get really good at it is about the time you typically meet someone who's like in the same spot as yeah. you for the same thing yeah. and it aligns. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, that's actually very helpful. I mean, I find the online space to be very daunting. It's like same thing else. Like you'll turn it on, talk to maybe a couple guys for four or five days. People are so the swiping though is like I find that sometimes it's like you'll sit there for an hour and you'll just keep swiping 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 and because it is we've become I guess so social media is everything and looking at a picture in our minds sometimes it's like oh it says a thousand words and right away we're like nope nope no nope. where you're probably passing up you know a lot of quality men based off of just bad first impression for pictures so do you find that though to be tricky to navigate through that. I mean, for women to not look at something and instantly feel like, oh, you look good enough for me to want to give you the time of day to have a conversation. Yeah. And I think most people, these are generalizations. Um, and when, when I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I'm able to give more customizable advice mm -hmm. because there are the people who won't give anybody the time of day except the guy who looks like he stepped off GQ magazine. And that guy's dating 20 other women. Remember, you're mm -hmm. vetting men for a relationship, not for how they look in a picture, right? So there's that. But then there's, there's the guys who really are buffoons and they've got the frat boy stuff going on and you can tell that you don't want to date those men and of course you don't have to date those men and they probably are not looking for the love of their life or or they're completely clueless if they're posting pictures like that so there are the two extremes and to just know where someone is in that i would say my most generalized advice for that would be most people look better for their pic than their pictures and you are vetting someone for at least if, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably vetting someone for a relationship, not for looking amazing in a picture and being able to date all the women. You don't want somebody who is just looking to fill up his calendar with a bunch of hookups. Right. Yeah, no, it's so true. Um, the other thing I find tricky too with online dating is, is kids of men and women admitting that they have kids? Because I think, you know, that social stigma of if you are a single mom or a single, single dad and you've been married before or have children, that that means you're damaged goods. And, you know, we typically tend to turn the other way. And so I find women have a really hard time admitting in conversation and very speaking up right away, like, I do have children, because I think that that is a turnoff for men. Especially well, for men who maybe don't have kids. And, and But here's the thing, and I say this with so much love, and, and, and I feel it, because I was a single mom of four kids, and I can tell you it was a thing. There were guys who did not want to date me because I had four children. And was it fair? No. And did it suck? Yeah, you bet. But the fact is, you have kids and they're not going anywhere so if you take a while to admit you have kids, you've kind of bait and switched the guy and then he's even more annoyed. So it's like, have you ever had the experience where you get on a date and he looks way older than his picture? And I mean, it happens to some degree to everyone. If it's not kids, it's did they lie about their age? Did they lie about mm -hmm. their degree of physical fitness? Did they you know, grow a 10 foot long beard? Did, did he dye his hair purple? Is it really even his hair? Does he have any hair? You know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to make light of it, but when you have children, when you have something that is a reality in your life, I don't think that it's ever a good idea to not be forthright about it because when they're going to find out that you have a child or children and if they're out because of it, then they're out anyway. And mm -hmm. then you've, you've then spent your time on it as well. And if you have children, you probably don't have a lot of time to be spending with people who aren't going to be okay with the fact that you have them. 
No, it's so true, right? And I guess speaking that in the beginning is probably worth way more than it is in the long run, for sure. Um, two questions kind of left for you. One, I would love to hear, I know you're writing about your top 10 biggest fails, but like aside from one of those ones that's on the list, what is something you can share with us? A story of an epic fail or just something insane that, you know, a guy did on a first date that just, you know, massive red flags or something light for us to to hear? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, so many to pick from. I mean, if you read these, you would be like, how on earth did this girl ever get married? But um, yeah, epic first date fails. One one time I, uh, I went on a first date and this guy must have been like about a gazillion years older than me. And he, he, he was one of the few that actually looked better in his, I don't know what, what happened with his picture, but Mm. he bought me a drink and then proceeded to grill me about what did I know about the theater? And he, he clearly thought I was like the biggest moron. And he was like such a snob about, well, I went and saw this show and I went and saw that show. And don't you know anything about the theater? And I was just laughing and sipping my drink. And I was like, well, this one's for the book, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's so funny, right? I mean, I could have just imagined the stories of all women out there collectively of what it is that they have gone through and what they've experienced and the things that come out of people's mouths. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. But I mean, I guess like anything, you got to get through enough, uh, kiss enough frogs to find your prince, right? Um, you do. And and you can try, you do have to be willing to try it. You will probably have to kiss a few frogs, but there is something to be said for learning how to date effectively so that you don't have to kiss quite so many. And Mm -hmm. my cardinal rule of online dating and really of life is don't take anything personally. Now I had some really funny, lighthearted, just ridiculous. Oh, I had another date where this guy was like, well, you seem to really have your act together. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm on a date with the having your act together police. Um, yeah. but yeah, you know, there are those things and I could have, and then I was dumped via text. This is also going to be in the, in the mm-hmm. blog series, but I could, some of them, them were lighthearted and kind of funny and kind of like you go home shaking your head and think, well, all right, you know, there's a price for those free drinks. And then part of them were like horrible, like devastating, like crying on the floor of my apartment. And I did not let those things stop me. I ended up married to the love of my life anyway. I would do it all over again twice just to be with him. That's how good it is now. It was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. And I recommend learning, learning how to date effectively. We are not taught how to do these things. It does not come naturally. And it's so much easier to to just learn than it is to try to figure it out on your own and Mm -hmm. take 20 years like I did. No, for sure. So where can people find you? Where can the listeners find you if they want to reach out if they want to connect? Um, if they're ready to kind of learn to date effectively and, you know, to navigate the online space with some help, where can everybody find you at? Yeah, you can find me at reneesuzannecoaching.com and definitely get on my list. If you want to read about my worst dating experiences, it's some of it is going to be funny and some of it's going to be, you know, just all the things, but I, I was able to be successful. I found my guy at the end And there's a lot of great dating tips on my website and there's a free video to help you get into the relationship that you want. Perfect. Awesome. And one last question, because I do typically talk quite a bit about sexuality, women's sexuality in general. What is the one thing that you do to honor yourself as a sexual being, sexual creature um, to lean into your feminine side? Yeah, you know what I learned actually through this whole process um, is I was, I developed very young 
And I was a very young girl and I got a lot of unwanted male attention and I did not know how to nav navigate it. I was in a home where I was not protected or safe. My parents were just, you know, out doing their own thing. And um, I had to learn a lot about I so I grew up with the very bad limiting belief that all men just wanted one thing no one was ever going to love me I was an attractive girl with an hourglass figure and getting all this attention that I had no idea how to navigate and I just thought all guys just wanted this you know just wanted sex and I wanted to be loved and cherished and courted and all the things that I now get from my husband, all the things that I help my clients get. And the most honoring thing that I ever did for myself in that area was to discover for myself that my sexuality was for me. It wasn't for other people. I was not an object of gratification for men. I did not have to do things just to have a guy love me. I did not do things just to have a man stay in my life. I could do what I wanted to because it felt good for me because I loved myself. And that is the most honoring thing I ever did for myself in that way is to treat myself and cherish myself and communicate what I was looking for and take a stand for myself in that way to protect myself in the ways that I was never protected as a young girl to take that stand for myself and say, I am available for a long-term relationship with a man who loves me. I am not just here for people to buy drinks or dinner for and then expect things. This, this is for me. And I am honoring myself in this way. And I am available for intimate relationships with a man that I choose who loves me and treats me the way I want to be treated because that is what I want my experience to be. I love that. And I love how, how you put that in a way that it just, I'm so many women have feel that. And so many women grow up with that belief. And I mean, they grow up with it because I think at very young ages, somebody will say something to them. And then right away, it's like, you get that in your mind that that's what they're looking at. And I feel like once a man, it doesn't matter how old you are, once somebody has sexualized you and made it seem like that is the best quality of you, your looks, your body, things like that, it is really hard to, long term as a woman to feel honored and respected in other ways because then you start to think the only thing you have to offer them and the only thing that they're attracted to is the sexual part of yourself when, I mean that should be the least of the matters of what it is that we are attracted to in a person. And I know personally, as, as a girl, I've, I've felt that sometimes. And then it's like, after a while, you're kind of like, do you even like me for me? And then yeah. you start to have this pressure on yourself. Well, if I don't look good today and I don't put makeup on today and I don't wear your favorite pair of underwear today, does that mean that you no longer love me? Does that mean that you no longer are attracted to me? Because everything that they have said about you and comp complimented you on thus far has been something sexual, right? And it's it's a really hard thing to navigate in your mind as a girl and the pressure. And like you said, realizing that our sexuality is for ourselves, right? Yeah. 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 No, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, that's very personal. And I appreciate that you were willing to share that um, with everybody listening. Thank you. Thank, I'm glad you asked that because it was an, it was a very important part of my journey and it was very healing to do that for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think all women should step into that and realize that and, you know, do the steps necessary to heal that part of themselves. And I think in doing so, that actually also helps position us in a position to line up for looking for like a long-term partner that wants the same things that we want and, you know, putting ourselves in that online space, but you have to kind of step back and hold your sexuality and hold that aspect of yourself sacred and wait for the right person. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for sharing with everybody some online tips. And thank you for having this conversation with me. I'm really glad we got to do this. And thank you to everybody listening. If you want to connect with Renee, all of her information will be available for you guys. And I encourage every woman out there, if you're struggling to reach out, there's so many coaches, amazing people out there that have been in these spaces before that actually can help people, you know, actually step into what it is that they're looking for. So I'm just grateful that you're, you're one of them that's helping women do that. Thank you. And thank you so much again for having me. Thank you. All right, guys, we will talk to you later.